there is another, God willing, uh, it should go live at three o'clock Sunday school lesson uh, on YouTube. Do if you can watch it uh, and uh, do pass it on to other young folk uh, who might benefit from it. Uh, it is encouraging to see the number of uh, folk who have uh, watched it. I know probably some may be just fleeting, but nonetheless it is encouraging uh, and to hear uh, of those who have watched it. But James chapter 3 and uh, from verse 13 Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. Now James continues his theme of speech and the right use of the speech, but uh, bring it into a broader context that one who is wise, who is truly wise, will exhibit their wisdom with meekness uh, and humility and in a practical way with out of a good conversation the manner of life his works with meekness of wisdom and hearkening back to the first verse my brethren be not many masters or teachers i'm sure there is an inference given uh, that the the teachers the masters the masters the teachers within the christian church those who will be preaching and teaching should be those who exhibit meekness uh, and practical meekness and wisdom. Uh, it may not be quite so in these days in, when education is more widespread, but obviously in centuries past when fewer people, there were fewer people who were educated uh, 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 or, or learned, the temptation might be to appoint somebody to the ministry simply because of their learning and of their education, assuming that wisdom is merely a, a, a mental faculty, a mental, uh, an intellectual faculty. Uh, but James is cautioning against it, uh, saying rather uh, those that are learned those that are knowledgeable and wise, or, or at least seem to be so, it should show itself in meekness and in practical meekness uh, and humble ways. It is easy, sad to see in the world uh, the evidence that there are those who are wise in accordance with the world, skilled and knowledgeable in their particular field, uh, and yet are far from the ideal of Christian wisdom, heavenly wisdom, that is beautifully put in verse 17. It doesn't take long reading uh, the newspapers, whatever I read this week of two, uh, of the finest cricketers that Australia has uh, produced, yet for years, at least one of them, they have been, there has been a feud uh, between them and is ongoing to this day and uh, I didn't read it but I saw a, 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 an article uh, of all those uh, comedians comedy double acts where the two people hated one another and uh, the headline went uh, he was just a, a dollar sign to me that they there they are as it were trying to make people laugh and yet uh, at the heart of their relationship uh, is enmity uh, and hatred. Uh, but for the believer, uh, those that are wise and any sort of wisdom should show itself ultimately uh, in practical ways and in humility. The Lord Jesus Christ has hopefully gone to consider as our great example, the eternal wisdom of God come to this earth and yet wonderfully humble, wonderfully meek, uh, exhibiting all the precious uh, graces set forth in verse 17. Uh, but for our encouragement, for our challenge in one sense, uh, but 
for our help that the Lord freely gives us these things. If any man lack wisdom, as James said earlier, let him ask of God and he will give it. Uh, and we will inevitably fail trusting in our own uh, ways and flesh, but the Lord is able to give us that gracious, blessed wisdom from on high. It is such a beautiful picture uh, in verse 17, and God willing, we'll come on to it shortly. But he begins firstly with the negative side. Uh, verse 14, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Very strong language. But worldly wisdom betrays itself in this way, uh, with bitter envying and strife. And if we as believers harbour bitter envying and strife in our hearts, we should rather be ashamed rather than glorying and uh, putting ourselves forth as being wise and uh, astute in our criticism of others in particular. He says, glory not and lie not against the truth. Because you are living a lie as a believer. Uh, if one's whole way is taken up with envying uh, and fighting, and particularly with other believers, it is a lie against the truth. Uh, because we rather should be at peace. If we are the Lord's, uh, if we have trusted in the Saviour and in what he has done upon Calvary's cross, our old nature is crucified and the enmity between us and other people, other believers, is no more. For he uh, is our peace, as he tells us, Paul tells us uh, in Ephesians, uh, who has made of both one. I know that is Jew and of Gentile, but it is also applicable to all that we are uh, at peace in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and he uh, is our peace, and our peace one with another. And so if we are fighting bitter envying and strife with other believers, true believers, we are in one sense denying the truth. It's a similar argument that Paul gives uh, why husbands ought to love their wives, because they are one flesh. Uh, and a husband that uh, hates his wife is essentially hating himself. Uh, and uh, it is far better for him, for his own good, to love his wife because he will ultimately be loving himself in the best sense uh, of the word. Uh, and that there is a truth that marriage uh, two are one, uh, and to be fighting and always fighting and envying one another is to be denying that truth. And we do much better rather to love one another. And as the Lord's people, in the same way Christ is our peace, it's broken down the wall of partition and we may uh, be at peace with one another. Uh, and anything, though a man, though a woman appears very knowledgeable and wise in our eyes, uh, yet if they uh, are, are full of strife and envy and bitter envy uh, against the Lord's people, uh, we question what their wisdom is and whether it is of benefit to us. The wis this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly sensual, devilish, and the fruit of it, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Uh, it is the opposite of heavenly wisdom and uh, will ultimately lead to our hurt. Paul 
admonishes, warns the Galatians do nothing from strife and vainglory and says if you beat uh, and uh, uh, consume one another, be careful lest you sort of hurt your own selves. It is fairly plain uh, and simple to argue. And, uh, but it is strong words. Uh, where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. Contrasted with verse 18, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. But he will go on now, and I hope to use this to contrast it with what is not right. This wonderful, beautiful picture of heavenly wisdom that the Lord gives to us uh, and is preeminently seen in our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we could go through it simply, word by word, hopefully it will be of help to us. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, is first pure. Holiness must come first, as in Hebrews, where he says, follow, uh, pursue holiness uh, and peace with all men. There must be holiness. Uh, it is easy to be at peace uh, uh, with all men, but not to be holy. Uh, and it may be easy to be peaceable, uh, but not to be pure. But the Lord says the wisdom that comes from above is first pure. The Lord Jesus Christ wonderfully shows it. Uh, he is gracious, the friend of sinners, approachable, uh, peaceable, uh, and yet he is without sin. And he cannot and will not compromise with wickedness when they bring him uh, a, a man with a withered hand or with some other ailment upon the Sabbath day always he healed them. He never gave in to the pressure not to heal them, to avoid strife with the Pharisees. He always uh, was pure, always honest and truthful. Uh, first uh, pure, then, uh, then peaceable. But it is peaceable. Wisdom is peaceable. Now it is it takes wisdom to be peaceable uh, in this world. Uh, it takes wisdom to be peaceable with other believers. Uh, but wisdom will be ultimately peaceable. Uh, the Lord Jesus, we don't find him seeking out the Pharisees to uh, have a go at them. Rather, it is they who come to him to test him. Uh, and to accuse him, and he graciously does not answer them angrily, does not tell them off again and again for their uh, wicked uh, testing, but graciously uh, bears with them and tests them he, uh, and, and answers them. Uh, Moses' Moses' fault was that he reacted angrily to the children of Israel asking for water a second time. We, we do sympathize with him, but he was at fault. Uh, uh, but the Lord Jesus never was at fault in such a way, never uh, succumbed uh, or, or even had the slightest, in one sense, temptation to anger uh, from an inward sense, to lose his temper with those who came to try him. We find him avoiding confrontation. Certainly he had to go into Jerusalem. Uh, he had to, as it were, present himself to be taken and to be ultimately tried and put to death. And certainly at times he warned uh, the disciples, his hearers, uh, often of the snares uh, of the Pharisees and their hypocrisy. Uh, but he did not go uh, and willfully insult them. And we, uh, it is, requires wisdom to do the same today. We dare not, uh, in such a day when the, the sort of slightest 
Uh, reproach of sin uh, can be seen as hate crime. We dare not say, no, these things are all acceptable. The ways that people live quite contrary to the word of God is acceptable, uh, let alone pleasing to the Lord. We must say sin uh, is sin, uh, and we must ultimately reprove it. But uh, we are called, the Lord would grant us wisdom to, to say so graciously and with a, ultimately with a concern for people's souls that they might repent and turn back to the Lord uh, and be forgiven and received by the Lord. Uh, and uh, we do well to pray, to pray that uh, the Lord would grant us that wisdom, how to act uh, in, uh, in these days, not to compromise the truth of his word, but as far as possible to be at peace with all men. There is only one book in the old, in, sorry, in the New Testament that does not have an element of warning, an element of warning often about false teachers. Just one book, and that is one of the shortest books, Philemon. All the others contain often strong and clear warnings against false teachers and against false teaching uh, and to guard the people of God against such things and we must warn uh, we must uh, it would be very wrong not to do so uh, but there are ways obviously of, of doing so that are not uh, that are as far as possible peaceable and for seeking the Lord's people's good and ultimately if possible the repentance of those who we are warning against uh, there is the beautiful picture in Isaiah chapter 11, I'll just read it to you, uh, of the kingdom of God that some would say is in one, some measure uh, true now, that, uh, that those uh, of different characteristics will dwell peaceably together. Uh, the uh, chapter, uh, Isaiah 11, well, I'll read from verse 2, speaking of the Lord Jesus. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and a fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea and as the Lord says uh, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another that all men may know that ye are my disciples and uh, the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable and then gentle and easy to be entreated gentle uh, or kind the word could be translated or meek and often we are told uh, in the scriptures, the servant of God shall not strive, but be patient with all men. The Lord Jesus uh, will not, and in one sense we should imitate it, he will not put out uh, smoking flax, a bruised reed he will not break, nor smoking flax he will not put out. Uh, that as far as possible we are to be gentle in our dealings, 
but with souls. Now I don't know precisely where this brother stood on every doctrinal matter, but uh, there was uh, the death, the passing to glory, we trust, of a well-known apologist called Ravi Zacharias uh, in the last uh, week or so. Uh, and one interesting thing he said, he was well known for answering difficult questions about the faith, about the gospel. And he said, one thing you must remember is that behind every question is a person. Uh, and he cited the example of a young couple coming to him and asking him about the uh, uh, existence of evil in the world. Uh, and he said he could see behind them uh, a little baby that was seriously uh, handicapped. Uh, and men may come with difficult questions, not out of enmity, uh, not out of uh, 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 a seeking to necessarily uh, uh, do you down, but because their hearts uh, are hurting. And I, I can remember one man coming and uh, uh, in the open air, you, you're speaking to people uh, and they come and ask such a question and you find out the Lord, he had a, this man had a, a baby who died soon after childbirth and his reaction was uh, to shake his fist and be angry with the Lord but you can point them to show them that no a little child in such a situation we believe from the scriptures they are taken to be with the Lord and his child rather he should rejoice that the the baby is now with the Lord and safe and free from all the sorrows of this world but we do well to remember uh, to be gentle uh, with even those who come seemingly with harsh words what is it uh, their conscience may be troubled about something and they are reacting against it uh, and there are ways of graciously dealing with such folk to rather to point them to the Saviour and to diffuse, as it were, uh, their uh, anger. And uh, teachers uh, obviously must maintain order and discipline in a class, but generally those that are patient and gentle with the children will achieve the best results. And uh, it is part of that heavenly wisdom first pure then peaceable uh, gentle or kind uh, and meek uh, but then the next quality precious and easy to be entreated or one might say reasonable that such a one is not stubborn and bigoted uh, and unwilling to consider anything else but easy to be entreated, willing to listen to reason, not thinking that just because we think something, it is right. We must hold fast to the word of God and to right ways, uh, but there are many things uh, that are not, we are not compromising the scriptures uh, if we give way on in one sense. Uh, often I think, uh, at home, uh, parents can demonstrate a, a sweet reasonableness with children. Children may uh, ask questions, and it's uh, one shouldn't despise their questions. Uh, and obviously, we may show there are certain things we cannot uh, compromise on, uh, but we can show in other things that we are not always right, uh, and they may request certain things that it may be good in one sense uh, to allow and to let them to do that are not obviously sinful, but it is a precious quality uh, that shows that we are wise, easy to be entreated, able to listen, able to discuss, not turning things down uh, in the church, that the leadership is willing to listen to what others are uh, suggest and so on 
Uh, and maybe they will say no, but in other ways, it is precious to be able to listen to reason and uh, precious quality uh, of wisdom, not uh, self-opinionated and stubborn and proud in one's own opinion, uh, but able to listen to others' point of view, full of mercy and good fruits. Uh, and I think I might say, dare I say it, practical. Wisdom is ever practical. It is very easy to be critical. It is very easy to say of uh, another church or of another believer, oh, they're doing it wrong. It is harder to say, this is the way you should do it. And it is harder still to say, or not to say, but to do it oneself. Uh, and, but wisdom is full of mercy and good fruits, practical expression of that wisdom. Wisdom in the Bible is not uh, purely academic wisdom, but it is practical. And uh, I used to think, oh, it would be nice to be a university lecturer, professor. One can spend one's time uh, pondering higher thoughts and so on, and research and so on. But we forget that university professors are the same fallen people as others, and there uh, will be as much, if not more, Comp competition and strife and envying uh, amongst them as with the population uh, as a whole. Uh, but the wisdom of the Lord is practical. The Lord Jesus went about doing good and uh, doing good to, to individuals, showing wonderful, gracious mercy. And the Lord's people, it is so precious. You have individuals who get on with their work and uh, are, are understanding and knowledgeable, but others who are, are, will be very well read, possibly, not all who are well read as such, but well read, but do very little and rather use their learning to criticize uh, the, the efforts of those who are seeking to serve the Lord in one way or another. Uh, but wisdom is full of mercy, kindly, uh, forgiving uh, and pardoning and good fruits, uh, pleasing in one sense to one another, uh, to the Lord, uh, but also to, to the world as a whole, uh, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Uh, adding these, we can be partial. The word literally is judging or prejudging without judging. Tyndale translates it simply judging, but I think it means pr prejudice, literally prejudging, judging without proper uh, evidence, making our minds up uh, and uh, deciding something uh, without any real warrant to do so and then simply uh, going ahead, and uh, wisdom is not so. I once heard, it shocked me, two uh, Reformed pastors saying they wouldn't uh, take note uh, in, a, in a matter, a serious matter uh, uh, of church discipline or, or uh, jurisprudence, as it were, uh, that, that the, the, would, wouldn't take note of the uh, testimony of a Pentecostal pastor simply because he was a Pentecostal, uh, because he, and uh, they said, we, well, we don't have fellowship with such, but the truth, Pentecostals can be just as truthful and honest uh, as uh, Reformed pastors, but very sad that some might judge uh, in such a way and... Uh, uh, deny legitimate uh, honesty and hearing to others, but wisdom is without partiality and ultimately without hypocrisy, not uh, 
pretending one thing and doing another. We can all be guilty of it, but we pray that the Lord would keep us from it, keep us sincere, keep us uh, holy and with integrity and practicing what we preach. It is the hardest part, obviously, uh, of any teaching, of any preaching, to actually do it uh, oneself. But he says, as an encouragement, verse 18, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Righteousness is sown in peace, not in strife. There must be strife at times. Uh, the Second World War, I'm sure, was necessary to fight against the evil of Nazism. Uh, but it doesn't promote, ultimately, uh, righteousness in a gospel sense. It is sown in peace. The gospel is a message of peace, peace between man and God, uh, a peace, ultimately, between men uh, on the basis of that peace between man and God. Uh, but it is sown in peace, not in contention, not in strife. Uh, it is what... Uh, we find distasteful about some open-air preachers. Some have described it uh, as the insult method, that they go out uh, and just uh, let rip against immorality in society in a very uh, strong and plain way. In one sense, they are right, but it is not the way to go about winning souls, about preaching. Obviously, there is wisdom needed uh, but one can apply uh, i remember hearing the testimony uh, of, uh, of a lady a homosexual lady who said what convicted her was uh, uh, that she was convicted of being a liar which all men are uh, and she was uh, not expecting uh, the, the, the speaker the preacher to speak about such things and it is there are many ways that we can preach and warn and seek to convict of sin uh, without being uh, deliberately insulting uh, of others. We must be gracious, we must uh, preach against sin, but pride is in every heart. Uh, all men are liars, we all from time to time, uh, and those in the world much more so, we all have inward lusts and sins in our hearts that uh, we can be convicted of uh, and there are ways uh, of preaching the gospel and seeking to call men to repentance without uh, deliberately uh, uh, insulting them to their face. Acts 17, Paul's preaching before uh, the Areopagus on the Areopagus in Athens, uh, it's an amazing uh, wonderful uh, preaching of the gospel. He doesn't rail at them. He doesn't say, you stupid, ignorant idolaters, uh, because he knows that would get nowhere. But he, in so many words, says that, but graciously uh, and wonderfully, logically, uh, in his preaching, seeks to show them the folly uh, of worshipping wood and stone, that the Lord who made all things is far greater than that and uh, it is uh, wonderful and an example to us how we may by the grace of God likewise seek to make known the gospel. He can be, Paul certainly can be at times strong in his warning uh, when preaching to Jews in the synagogue and they will not uh, receive him uh, receive rather not him but the testimony from the scriptures he, he warns them and says uh, beware lest this come upon you that uh, you are blind and so on and the prophecies in the Old Testament uh, and is very earnest in, in his appeal to them but he does not willfully and deliberately uh, uh, insult them as fools uh, uh, and so on uh, and for us, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace 
of them that make peace. Some people would say, oh, you mustn't even mention the word sin. No, we have to mention sin, but uh, we may do it peaceably, uh, that men may see their need and turn to the Saviour, and ultimately sown in peace of them that make peace, that the gospel brings peace, peace to lost sinners between them and God, and peace in the world, peace in families, uh, peace between husband and wife, peace in nations, uh, and it, it is very precious. But this wisdom, I will just close. How may we have it? We must pray. We must remember that it is God that gives it to us. We are not wise in and of ourselves. Uh, all that we have in any sense, in a good sense, is from the Lord. We must pray for it, pray for wisdom in witness, uh, pray for wisdom in all situations, uh, and to remember how weak we are, to, uh, to, to confess our sins to the Lord, to remind ourselves before the Lord how foolish we are, how easily we sin, how unwise we are if left to ourselves but that the Lord may wash us clean uh, and may uh, make us new and grant us that wisdom that is from above. I'll just read it once more. It's such, so beautifully put by James. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy and may he grant it to us help us and bless us in these difficult and confusing days with that wisdom precious wisdom from on high amen our last hymn is number 